When it comes to indie games, co-op is something people always talk about. Companies left and right create games with the idea of playing them with someone else. Games like Overcooked, Moving Out, Pikuniku and many more are best played or are only available to be played with at least one extra person. Sadly, not all of these games allow you to play online with a friend. Which is important considering the current status of the whole world demands online play. Sure, Steam allows for online play together, but for someone living in a country that has the second worst internet connection on the planet, it's not a viable option. Games that have actual servers or a decent netcode are really appreciated, because they allow me to play games with my friends, even though we haven't seen each other since March. Now, I'm telling you all of this because last weekend I spent a good chunk of my time playing an indie game that allowed me to experience the joys of online play without wanting to throw myself out of the window doing flips due to garbage internet connection. The game in question is 20XX, a game developed by Battery Staple Games, and this is a roguelike platformer and a spiritual successor to Mega Man X. For those that are initiated, roguelikes are games that have random elements that get reshuffled every time you start a game, like enemy placement, level set pieces, or collectibles. So welcome to the Indie Grounds, the underground cave where indie games are the center of attention. Yeah, this is a cave. Beat it. Today we'll be taking a look at 20XX, the roguelike Mega Man X-like video game. There are many reasons why I'm playing 20XX for this video, the main one being that it was free in the Epic Game Store, which solved the main issue I had with the game. You see, I wanted to play 20XX because of the co-op, but back in 2016 during release of the game that would have meant that I had to buy my own copy and a second copy for a friend because I couldn't drag them to a game they didn't really know about. So four years later, my friend and I are finally able to play 20XX together and boy, we've missed a lot. Something that we have to point out is the fact that spiritual successors in video games usually have more weight on them because they'll be consistently compared to the source material, especially when it comes to the flow and sense of gameplay. Games like Ukulele, Bloodstain, and Bug Fables are some examples of games that feel similar to the games they got inspiration from. And 20XX is no different. As a person that has played every Mega Man X and Zero game ever created, I have a certain way of playing those kinds of games, and the game emulates the Mega Man X formula really well. Even adapting the balance between platforming, dashing, and the main thing Mega Man does, jumping and shooting or slashing in my case. Another thing that they adapted really well is the boss fights. Like in every traditional Mega Man game, you go through a thematic stage and you face one of eight robot masters at the end. These bosses are unique and they have a specific power like fire or electricity, and once defeated, you can get its power and use it as part of your own arsenal. Not only that, but 20XX kept the rogue paper scissors mechanic that Mega Man is well known for, meaning that bosses have specific weaknesses, and getting hit by that specific attack may do massive damage or have side effects during the battle. As you can see, everything that would need to be present in an indie game inspired by Mega Man X is here, and the roguelike aspect of 20XX spices up the experience quite a lot, with stores that offer different items, Upgrades that produce more money, different basic weapons, attack modifiers, upgrades that increase the chance of enemies dropping more items, and the list goes on. But the most important aspect of all this are armor upgrades. Armor upgrades in Mega Man X were a big deal, adding a bunch of added features to the main moveset you had available in the game. This is no different in 20XX. You can find different armor parts enhancing specific parts of your moveset by either giving you a shield while dashing, a forward directional dash, a glide, a double jump, fast weapon charging, even chargier weapon charging, and even reducing knockback. This mechanic in the game is great, ensuring that no one run is going to be similar to another one when it comes to upgrades. But most importantly, for me at least, is the co-op. 20XX handles it beautifully. You can host or join a game and each player can choose a character. One can go as a sword attacker with high damage but super high reward, 
and the other can go for a long range one that has a little less damage but is a safer option overall. But at the same time, both can go as the same character. So, free pickings. Playing online means that there's no need for both players to be on screen at the same time, meaning that each player can make their way through the stage at their own pace, and if only one of them was able to surpass a certain obstacle, either player can teleport to the other side at the cost of some energy. When it comes to the performance of the online, I have to say that it's really solid. Even with my potato internet and hosting the game at the same time, my friend never lagged, even though in my screen he was lagging as hell. 20XX is amazing and I highly recommend you to play it with a friend. I swear you'll have an amazing time. And once you do, get hyped for the release of 30XX which was just announced and it looks like a fucking banger with tight as hell pixel art. But that's going to be all from me for today, thank you all you guys for watching, if you liked the video please hit the like button, if you want to see more of the Indie Grounds consider subscribing, there's also 4 other episodes that you can check out right now that are really awesome, um, I highly recommend you the Bug Fables one, it was really great to make. I'm working on Under Hero, but the game hasn't captured my attention quite yet, so I want to give it another go before deciding if I'm going to do a video about it or not. And if it doesn't, I'm going to do a video in conjunction with other games that I had pitched for the Indie Grounds, but didn't give me a lot to talk about them, so I'm going to do that. But once again, thank you all you guys for watching, and I will see you guys pretty soon. Take care.